now let me ask you, um, people said in Imitation of Life that, that, the, that the, when it first, oh I want to hear, when it first came out, the critics did not like it, but the audiences made it a hit. Now, why do you think the audiences made it a hit? That it was just, it had come around at the right time, that everybody wanted to see two women? I think it was just timely, you know, because, now that was a remake, you know that. Yes, of course. Now, the first one I did not see, but the first one, uh, and I think that uh, in understanding about the second one, I think uh, even the blacks, they liked it, you know, which of course I didn't think they would because they hated the first one. And I thought maybe they would dislike the blacks, black, the second one. But they didn't, you know, they, they took it, they liked it, they enjoyed it, and they, so I guess it was timely. I guess they saw what I saw in it, that was that the relationship. You know, the first one, I think the woman made pancakes or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't ever see it. And Ross wouldn't let me see it. He had it. You know, when, when, when I went on the interview to interview for the movie. Cut. It's ironic, isn't it? They said, that, I read what the critics wrote, and they said that when the two of you were in, you and Lana were in the frame together, that seemed extremely stiff. Now, did, did Douglas Sirk direct you two to stay very kind of, like, not a lot of huggy, kissy, embracing thing, but to be rather reserved, like the body language. You're talking to each other, but the body language is... No, he didn't direct us about any body language. Uh, if there is an awareness of body language, uh, we, we're the blame for that. Not does the sir, no, no. Uh, did Lana stand in a rather posy kind of way when she would walk and deliver lines on her marks? Was she very reminiscent of the way she had been schooled? You know, like the MGM school where they would make you so aware of key lights and walking a certain way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as the opposite actress, did you feel that? And yeah. you were trying to play with her? Uh, I could sometimes, yeah, sometimes. But uh, she's sort of let go and would come into the fold, as I would say, because she knew what kind of actress I was and what the school that I was from, you know, which, you know, the actor's lab. I shouldn't mention that, I suppose. <laughs> but, 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 you know, she went, she, it was written, she wrote many times herself that she would, she was terrified. She would never go on a stage. She could never understand how somebody could be in a play. And of course, you were in a lot of plays. Oh, yes. So you were on the boards, but she never exposed herself that way. She was always hidden behind the makeup, the lights, for very selective things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The image was a very controlled image. But don't you think, uh, in, you, now you saw the movie, I know. Don't you think that she was not, that she let go a couple of times in the movie and just played it for its worth? Instead of staging it, you know, so, you know, because I know what you mean about Lana, how she can, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, she, 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 she has so much talent, that Lana Turner. She had a lot of talent. If she's just given to it and let go, there's nothing she couldn't do. And I used to tell her that, you know, I said, you could play whore, anything like that. Well, Anita said, don't say that. Oh, I said, yes, you can. I said, you could do it, just anything you want to do. She said, you think I got the full sweep of the camera? I said, you got it right in your hand, you know? Use it, I tell her that, you know? She gets such a kick out of me telling her these dirty things. <laughs> so for school I'm from, you know, I said, that's what we do. <laughs> tell me again about the most difficult scene, about them shooting the death scene out of sequence and how she just started crying. Oh, yes, okay. yes. So start with that. Oh, yes. Oh, the most difficult scene was the death scene, which they shot early in the movie, in making the movie. They should have waited until, you know, the, I guess the end of the movie, close to the end anyway. But, uh, so, but they did, they, we did the death scene and when I died, uh, she just started, don't leave me, that's what she said. Don't leave me, don't leave me, you know, and, and she started saying that. And she never stopped saying it. She said it just screaming and crying and crying. They couldn't stop her from crying. She cried for three days. 
three days. And when she came back on the set, her face was big as mine almost. So Kurt Douglas Sirk sent her, he sent her, sent her home because she couldn't work. He said, oh, I made a mistake. I should have, I should have waited. I should not have shot that scene. I should have waited to shoot it at the very last. Oh boy, she just cried so. Oh, did she cry. When I think about it, I feel like crying right now. She was so, she wasn't crying about the scene, I don't think. I think she was crying about frustration, what had happened to her all this time. And how hard she had worked to attain what she had attained, attained and it was just all going for naught. I think that's what she was really crying about. And then me dying to you in the scene that added to her frustrations. Mm. When I think about her crying like that. I have felt that she was like some little girl who kept chasing for this dream, this concept, this great romance, and it always eluded her. And, and it was almost like, how could you be the most beautiful star, and yet the one thing that you want, you know, the one thing that every woman wants should have been hers, but it always eluded her. Do you think there was a point where she just kind of gave up and said, well, it's, I'm not gonna have that in my life? I don't know if, if she just gave up or not, but it did uh, seem to me that it, it just eluded her. And I think that she, that she should have had just about everything. She's so beautiful. She had all kinds of money and beautiful clothes, and she was beautiful, talented, intelligent. And, uh, but on the way, some way, whatever she had hoped for, she never attained. And I never did seem to find the right man, whatever that meant. The right man, I don't know. But she sure didn't give up trying, did she? <laughs> Would you say that she never gave up, even when she was old, when she used to call you on the phone? Did, was she still looking for romance? I can't say what she was looking for at that time, because when we talked, she was sick. Right. So I don't know what she was okay. looking for, you know. That was a scene where I did, I had all the dialogue about at least six minutes of dialogue. And I was talking, 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 talking. And nervous, 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 talking, talking. But Lana was there, she was standing there. And I was talking to her, but she was not in the scene, you understand? I was talking to her and she was there. And I just kept on talking, kept on blowing my lines and blowing my lines. and and couldn't get it straight and just getting so upset like I am right now. Then pretty soon uh, uh, the director, he said, Juanita, let me look, come, come Juanita, let me show you something. And then he'd take me over there where I'd look at the, you know, they have a film on where they turn it over, you know. And I looked at my cheeks and the muscles in my face. <laughs> they were just going like that, just jumping, jumping, jumping. Scared to death, scared to death, Lana said, go on, you can do it, go on. She's standing right there doing 23 times, 23 takes, she stood right there, you can do it, she kept telling me I could do it. I never did get it right. But anyway, she was loyal, she was loyal, she was right there for me. <laughs> and the next day I came back, I had it, I had it right down, right down, I'm telling you. But she, she stood right by me. She did several things she stood by me because she knew all the tricks of the camera, you know. She knew all the tricks and she would say, Juanita, you know, you move here, you do this. And, you, you know, she would tell me, you know, different little things. You know, most stars don't do that. That's the first one I and the last one that I ever had to do that. Yeah, but she'd tell me, look this way, Juanita. Look this way. Hey, you know, show what's your advantage. You got beautiful teeth, she'd tell me all the time, you know, which at that time I did have nice teeth. And she would tell me what side of my face and little, little things she would tell me to do. That, you know, the director here hasn't got time to tell me everything, but she would tell me little things about the camera and how to, you know. She was a joy. She really was. She really was. She probably knew more about how she should look than the director did. Oh, I'm sure. 
She knew. She, had she made, knew where her key light was. That's right. She, she knew all of that. She knew how to sweep down the stairs and with these gorgeous gowns and how to turn around and stop and and what side to show and what side not. <laughs> she knew all of that. She she was good with the camera. And she looked good with the cameras. You know that. She was beautiful. Just beautiful. Beautiful woman in and out. Just a beautiful woman. I have not worked with any any nicer, any warmer than Lana. Not work when I work with many of them. And you know she was a regular guy because her in her younger days she was going out with Billy Daniels and swinging. Yeah. And, I mean, Del Armstrong said she was the first person to ever bring a record player on the set back in the thirties. Well, she was a swinger. Yeah, she was a swinger. She really was. <laughs> yeah, she was. And not a racist or you know what I mean. No. For that era, she was a very very. Ahead of her time person, you know. Most unusual. Because at that time to uh, allow me, you know, all that footage, you know, it takes a lot to, to allow, in fact, to allow a black face to come on the camera, period, because that's the focus of attention. I don't know if you know that or not, but it is. When a black face comes on the screen, there you are. Uh, but she allowed me all that, you know. It didn't cross her mind that. The, you know, keep me out of the camera because, you know, I'm black and all that. Now, she knew that, that I would be the focus of attention and she didn't care. So she allowed me all that footage. I was very, I'm very proud of her. <laughs>